in your hat, Ken. This is working out pretty good. Still showing 7.6 feet. Again, that gets me about 9, 10 feet. But the bottom just came up to 5, 4.9, 4.6, 4.5. That's good enough. We probably have about a foot of clearance. No more. Pulling into a cracker board marina. That's where we're trying to go after the white boat. to go put your eyeballs on a new marina or dock or fuel fuel dock whatever um, in this case a travel lift to slip if you can look at it the day before go do it you know so I did and I got to look at that big abandoned white trawler you see next to me and I got to look at you know how the travel lift was set up so it helps a hell of a lot and now we'll just speed this up a bit interesting setup because the travel lift crew cannot see where I am until I come around that corner, that uh, trawler next to me and so they don't know that I'm coming up the river otherwise they could have had the travel lift ready so they didn't have the slings in the water when I turned the corner so they, they made me back up a little bit and then you know then I could kind of nudge in there and you can see they're using boat hooks to control the boat they didn't want fenders they did not want mooring lines set out so you kind of go with them and it's kind of like a shared captaincy at this point. It's my boat, I own the boat, and I'm responsible, and yet it's their pick. Did you see mine? <laughs> I got fire coal growing on mine. <laughs> and the next thing we got to do is find a spot to put me where I have water and power. Oh my god. And I swear, all those barnacles are new. Yeah, like, I, 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 scraped, I scraped the hull less than two weeks ago. So you see some barnacles are there, and I swear, I just scraped the hull about two weeks ago. So that tells you a couple things. It tells you that barnacles can grow really quickly, and that once your bottom paint is mostly depleted, it, it's to stop working. So, <clears throat> him pressure washing, you can see we're down to some of the uh, red paint, which was the paint I had before I bought the boat. And I sanded that and painted over top of it. So maybe that was like a hard paint, I don't know. Well, you can see that my blue paint wore off enough at the bow down to the original bottom paint that was there when I bought the boat. And in some cases right here, you can see it's worn down below that. There's no bottom paint at all in some spots. 
like here and here. Mm. These are where barnacles got popped off and they take all the paint with them when they leave. Which is why you got to restore bottom paint and you can see in the bow where the most friction takes place or down to the original bottom paint. This is a transducer from the depth sounder which I did in Mexico and I see it's got corrosion on the outside which is bullshit because that was all brass or bronze I'm sure of it. But, uh, I'm not gonna get in there right now because they haven't got it blocked up yet. I'll wait till they're done and clear out. Oh, you got <laughs> Take good care of my baby. Don't <laughs> <say anything. laughs> okay, well, the boat's set up on the sticks. The only problem right now is the power. The, you see the yellow cable on the ground behind me? I'm connected to their shore power receptacle, but it doesn't work. But I can go ahead and get started. My first tool uh, is this thing here, my putty knife, and going after barnacles. Now these barnacles are ones that I missed when I did my, my hull cleaning. These little guys, they've grown since I did my hull scraping. I mean, honestly, just, we're talking just a, I mean, a week and a half ago, and these little buggers are back. They're about, you know, here's my finger. That's about how big they are. So, but they come off easily. Comes off pretty clean, so that's the first job. Just clean the hull. Then we to get the sanders out and start sanding. Trying to sand out any loose stuff and uh, just get a good rough surface for the new paint to adhere to. I'm uh, expecting to put paint on tomorrow. I don't think we'll have this all sanded today because this is the first side. We still have to do the starboard side or the port side. Over here, I've already gotten the anode off the shaft. We kind of cleaned up the propeller. It doesn't look good yet, but honestly it really is. So. I could wire brush it and really clean it, I guess, but I'm going to paint it anyhow. The shaft is all cleaned up to where I need the new anode, but I don't have the anode, so I'm going to go buy a couple of those. And otherwise, we're just ready to sand and sand and sand and then put on the new stripe, which really should go first, and then you do bottom paint after. So, but sanding is really the first step. So what I'm going to do is go get my wire brush and clean up the area on top and uh, just kind of, you know, looking for defects. Okay, so I've talked about discovery items before, and the first thing you want to do, I think, when you get to the boatyard is thoroughly inspect everything to see if there's any damage that you might not have known about. And so you can get your brain thinking about what do we need to do about it, if anything. So there's one thing I noticed. This is the area where that was very difficult to clean the hull a couple of days back, two weeks ago when I was cleaning the hull. This area was really tough to get off. And some of it came off with pressure washing and the rest I got off this morning. So it looks fine. It just needs to be sanded down and the correct bottom paint put on. I also noticed that the damage in the back of my keel, a little bit of gouged in to where the fiberglass really is. It's, in, it's past the gel coat for sure. Um, you see that? And that's the day the uh, 
the mooring line or the, the anchor rope wrapped around the keel and went completely off the side of the boat in the St. John's River in Jacksonville. That's the time I had to get towed. So I did cause damage. And I'm like, hmm, the question is, should I sand that down to the bare fiberglass and make an actual epoxy repair with the fiberglass top or just paint over it for now? I'm going to need to make a decision today about what to do with respect to repairing that notch on the back of the keel. Other than that, the boat looks fine. No issues, just this dirty shit. We don't know what created the ship color stuff, but if you scrape under it, you get to the good red paint. So it's kind of weird, but we'll just sand that off. Let's see, fixed by sanding before we paint. And uh, we're not going to do a hell of a lot else. If I get a chance, I'm going to sand all that red stuff because I'm going to repaint that to a different color. Um, I don't want it to be red anymore. It's, it's kind of just an ugly red. It's not shiny. Within a day of putting it on, it's not shiny and it just looks like shit. So I'm going to change that. Okay, well, I'm on break time. Taking five minutes off. And we're in the middle of sanding the hole. What a suck job. <laughs> but it's not a surprise. You know, you can't take it from this to looking ready for painting without sanding. You have to sand to do that. And it just creates the clouds of dust. And um, I think I'm going to stop and come over to this side of the boat, to the starboard side. That way it's easier to predict the wind. On the port side, I'm getting a lot of eddies and the wind the dust is going everywhere. But I want to finish this damn thing and have it ready for painting tomorrow. easy to quit but uh, I don't want to quit yet so I'm paying $75 a day to be in the yard but other than that um, and buying the paint which I still have to do I bought I've, I've already taken one gallon of their uh, bottom paint and I may have to buy two more but that, certainly two gallons their minimum I know I need two gallons but it seems to me in Mexico I used three gallons I just don't remember to get a, a whole second coat all the way across. I needed three gallons. And that's about a about thousand dollars worth of paint. This boat yard charges anywhere from three hundred to four hundred dollars per gallon for the bottom paint. But that's the deal. You have to buy the paint with them when you when you sign a deal when you sign up here. Whew. A busy uh busy twenty twenty two hours. So yesterday, my log says, uh, I think zero time 9.53, I'm officially on the hard. And now it's about 7.40 in the morning. So I've been here almost 22 hours in a position where I can do work on the boat. It really got a lot done. So thanks to the help of Jared and Jeff, that's a huge part of this. Um, the outside of the hull on the bottom, below the water line, is all sanded and ready for bottom paint. But there's one spot I think I need to go touch up. And I also want to get the propeller some more. <clears throat> but in, in general, the bottom is ready to go and we're done making that giant cloud of dust, which was just awful yesterday. I mean, I was actually blue, we were just that blue freaking dust. Um, so, let me grab the camera we'll head on down because I'm currently way up in the air here. The one down here that I had so much trouble clearing the bottom off of, that was near impossible to get off. We were just beating on it and I actually touched it with the angle grinder yesterday to get it as smooth as I could get it using a sander on the angle grinder. But, but that, I mean, that will cut holes in fiberglass. So you got to be careful how you use that. Um, I have some problems with the propeller. There's a couple spots here where there's some, a little bit of erosion in the blades itself. So probably a new propeller is in my future. And this one's the worst right there. See that? This little dings. Cavitation, baby. <laughs> that's what happens. But and that's where we're going to leave it for this episode. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to your comments. You'll notice that I have a yellow bootstripe instead of turquoise. That's because the bottom is going to be green, no longer blue. And you'll see that in the next episode. Again, guys, I always appreciate your comments and any thoughts that you may have. And with that, take care. Cheers. Have a great one.